Southwest Indiana has some of the worst air in the country. People are suffering there. I think the air quality stinks. You can feel your chest on a, a daily basis, how difficult it is to breathe. There was a fine dusting of ash. It was all over the uh, kids' play set. These streets would be just black with coal. All the way up through the courthouse square would be covered with coal dust. And it's the sacrifice zone. Uh, those folks have been blistered <laughs> with uh, particulate matter, uh, uh, knocks and socks and acid rain uh, for decades. There's an inherent conflict between fossil fuel industries and public health and the environment. Our future generations rely on our protests here today. Be darned if we're going to let anybody tear down our lives in eastern Kentucky. I think these conflicts aren't going away anytime soon. A super polluter is a term used by some academics to describe facilities that uh, contribute disproportionately to either air pollution or, or global warming. Last December, we began pulling in these EPA data sets, one on air toxics, the other on greenhouse gases. Uh, these two data sets had never been merged before. When we drilled down into that data, we found that, in fact, only 100 facilities account for a third of all greenhouse gas emissions, and another 100 account for a third of all air toxics emissions. And 21 facilities are on both top 100 lists, and four of those 21 facilities are in southwest Indiana. My husband was a repair technician, and he loved his job. He would travel the 50 states, and when he was away from this area, he was able to breathe better. When he got back into this area, he was having more and more trouble breathing. Um, he had a massive heart attack and uh, took his life one afternoon. My husband and I were together for 28 years. And we built the life that we loved, our children and our family. And that's not gonna change. One of the big things uh, that he did for my youngest daughter was he would tell her every night, I love you more more than any distance can keep us apart. He loved his family more than anything. And it is very challenging when I see my loved ones struggling to breathe or you know, even passing away. I am convinced that it is the coal industry. And I don't feel that they understand how important the air quality is. Evansville, Indiana is a city of about 120,000 people on the Ohio River right across from Kentucky. There are six coal-fired power plants around the city, and four of those are super polluters. And in fact, there are more air emissions from coal-fired power plants around Evansville than there are around any other mid-size or large city in this country. I think the people should fight for their homeland, and this is my homeland. The toxic emissions has been one of my main concerns for years and years, because being in the middle of all these power plants uh, and having these toxic emissions really has, has made this kind of a, a flip of a coin from your health standpoint. And there seems to be a resignation of people in this region that by the time their retirement age, they will have either had some form of cancer or a triple bypass at least. It's just an acceptance. They're, like I use the term resignation, that is what it is. People are just resigned to having ill health. There have been times that we have had ash on our property from the stacks. We kind of just got to run around. Um, I got you know, sent from one person to the next person to the next person, um, and we never got any answers. It 
it's, um, it's disappointing and, and you, you feel kind of frustrated because you don't know what to do about it and you don't know if there's anything to do about it. And I have five-year-old twins um, and they obviously like to play outside and the idea of, of, you know, we don't know for sure what they're breathing in or not. It's kind of a double-edged sword there because you don't want to expose yourself or your family to whatever is coming out of there, but you also don't want that to control enjoying our dream house. I worked in a surface coal mine starting in 1976. Raised three children. Next month, I'll celebrate 46 years of marriage to my wife. I know it's an attractive cause to say that coal is the problem for climate change and we need to abandon all use of coal. The idea that just killing coal today and cold turkey moving away from coal is a simplistic answer to a much more complex problem. And the issue has become either we use coal or we don't use coal, rather than trying to focus on technological solutions that make a very valuable energy source possible to continue growing our country and provide meaningful employment for our citizens. It is not as simple as sound bites or bumper stickers. President Obama has done everything he can to kill the coal industry. But power plants can still dump unlimited amounts of carbon pollution into the air for free. That's not right, it's not safe, and it needs to stop. The first day I was governor, I signed a moratorium on all new regulation. And today, Donald Trump said when he becomes president on day one, he will sign a moratorium on new federal red tape and work to roll back the EPA's clean power plan and end the war on coal once and for all. Yeah, this, this corner here is what we kind of refer to as the, uh, uh, the jowl of the coal dragon, so to speak, uh, ground zero. Uh, for the fight on coal. Here's the Indiana State House where the Indiana General Assembly is, as well as uh, Governor Mike Pence. Uh, in the taller building, the Indiana Government Center North, uh, is where the Department of Environmental Management is. Uh, IDEM is full of uh, climate change uh, skeptics and deniers. Well, Mike Pence uh, has not been a friend uh, to uh, ratepayers, and Mike Pence certainly has not been a friend uh, to the environment. So Indiana was uh, the leading state uh, in the United States of America in terms of wind development uh, in the late 2000s. And all of those trends of investments in efficiency, uh, investments in wind, uh, have gone out the door uh, since Mike Pence took office. So it's had uh, a negative impact on our economy in terms of higher electric rates, a negative impact on public health uh, and environmental quality, and there's no mistaking uh, Indiana's enormous impact uh, on climate change. Collectively, these plants are pumping out millions of pounds of toxic substances a year, like sulfur dioxide and like fine particles. And they're also pumping out millions of metric tons of greenhouse gases. Coal has been enormously important in the U.S. for, for many years. Uh, it has provided uh, most of the biggest share of the electricity that's been produced and used in the United States. And so if you build a brand new, highly efficient coal-fired power plant, you get much lower CO2 emissions than you do from, from older plants. I think clean coal is pretty much an oxymoron, that it's a conflict in terms. The maximum reward for cleanup in the United States, based on the research that I and others have done, is by cleaning up coal plants and getting rid of that source. What my research has really focused on is trying to figure out, well, okay, particles are bad for your health, but which particles? And it really points towards coal. So this is why the bulk of the numbers of uh, deaths that are associated with air pollution are cardiovascular. Um, and from breathing these particles, having an impact on your heart. It's, it's impossible to sort of say that this one death was caused by um, that, by air pollution. But when you start looking at millions of people, then you what you can see is that their uh, the collective risk is raised. 
there's no question that that in the United States we really are seeing, you know, whether you call it a war on coal or a war over coal, and you have the environmental community that wants to eliminate coal altogether, no coal mining, no coal experts, no coal-fired power plants. This whole uh, pretext of there being a war on coal, I mean, you know, it's just corporate victim playing. I mean, this is something that abusers do. They, they claim they're the victims. All of a sudden, oh, everybody's attacking me, when in fact, they're the ones that are causing the damage. I think it's a mistake for people to assume that uh, the coal industry, the oil industry, uh, are going to simply abandon these very lucrative franchises. And we would expect these conflicts to continue for years, if not decades. It has been very tough. It has been very challenging um, to be mom and dad to my seven-year-old, to be a grandma and a grandpa for uh, the grandbaby, and to be a help to my daughter has been very, very challenging. When I'm at the cemetery, and I think that it's very challenging to do this on my own, but I sharpen my sword and I go forward. I'm not here to kill the coal industry. I'm here to save the quality of life.